ಗೋವರ್ಣನು ಅನ್ನ ಗೋಪ ಕುಮಾರ ರಿಂಗ 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 ಪಾಂಡು ರಿಂಗ ರಿಂಗ ವಿಟ್ಟಲಿ ಮಂದಿ ಮೇ ಆಓ ನನ್ನ ನಾನ ನನ್ನ ಮಂದಿ ಮೇ ಆಓ ನನ್ನ ನಾನ ನನ್ನ ಕಿಶೋರ autism is a disorder of unusual brain development shreyas the 9 year old boy in this video has autism he does not like making eye contact he does not like making friends he stays away from social interactions and often insists on rigid daily routines his speech is monosyllabic water food sleep play is what he says most of times but watch him when he sings and he seems to do it effortlessly anecdotal evidence across the world suggests that individuals with autism love music music and speech are processed by similar regions of the brain they are two of the most important forms of communication used by human beings why then is it that a child with autism who has so much problem speaking making language is able to sing so effortlessly my laboratory at the national brain research center has been interested in trying to understand this here is a picture of the human brain and that's the frontal lobe which is in the front of your head and the temporal lobe which is sitting just above your ears these are the two regions of the brain that are important for both speech language and music what we wanted to do was to try and study what is it about the connections between these two regions because of which speech and music are processed differently in children with autism and we did this by using an mri scanner okay the picture on the left shows the picture of an mri scanner so a child gets into the mri scanner and we look at brain structure which is seen in the middle and at the side you see a picture where we look at brain activity so the colors on this image show you regions of the brain that are active when a particular function is being performed So the experiment that we did was the following we brought in children who were typically developing between the ages of 6 and 15 and we brought in children with autism and we studied their brain structure and we studied their brain activity as they listened to spoken words and sung words and what i will share with you today are the results of the study looking at brain structure what we found was that the connectivity between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe the one used for language processing and the one used for hearing was impaired in children with autism as compared to typically developing kids to try and understand what happened during brain function here is what we did children listened to two sets of words one which went the following way cartoon and the other set cartoon so there were two sets of stimuli one in which words were spoken there were 30 such words and 30 more words the same words mind you but now imposed with two tones and we used only major notes and here are the results of that experiment So if you look at the brain activity between the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere in typically developing children you see robust activity in both hemispheres of the brain in the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe but look at kids with autism and you hardly see any activity in the left hemisphere whilst listening to spoken words there is some activity in the right hemisphere so there is an impairment when they are listening to spoken words but now watch the magic unfold when they listen 
to sung words. It's almost like voila. Look at the level of activity that you see in sung speech for typically developing kids and those with autism. In fact, in the kids with autism, you see the brain light up like a Christmas tree. So clearly, the sung stimulus is able to engage the child with autism. For me, this was science providing proof for art, right? Here is the best scientific evidence we could find that music, which people had reported anecdotally was working with children with autism, did indeed manage to reach out to them. It also told us something very interesting in terms of understanding connectivity in the human brain. What it told us was that the connections between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe were dynamic in nature. Whilst they were impaired during speech, during song, they were restored. The network between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe managed to rescue the activity. So here is what the idea that we want to capitalize on and take forward. The idea is, can we capitalize on the fact that sung speech is able to engage the brain with autism? Can we piggyback on this and try and get them to learn things, to engage them by using sung speech? As the story went around after we published it, we found that there were people across the world who were writing back to us to share the fact that children with autism were indeed responding to music. In fact, the first video that I showed you today was sent to me by a music teacher from Chennai, providing evidence for the fact that, Madam, here is what you have been talking about. I'm delighted you can now provide me the scientific evidence for that. But the brain has something very interesting otherwise, too. It has a phenomenon called neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the brain to change based on learning. So now the idea is, we know that there is an impairment in the structure. Can we try and bring in function to try and change that structure? Because we know that the brain has the ability to change. And nothing better to do this than when the kids are really young. So along with the clinic in Delhi, we've started to work with young kids between the ages of two and three years. They are both exposed to spoken words and sung words. And I want you to see how they interact when information is provided to them in these two different domains. Look at me, Dave. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Put the, put the green square. That's Dave listening to spoken words. engage in spoken word condition and sung word condition. He even indulged in a high five during the sung word condition. As we've done these over 12 trials over three months, his vocal communication has improved considerably too. So here is what I'm here to appeal to all of you to, for. Two things. One, if you know somebody with autism or somebody who is at risk with autism, Spread the word. Tell them that music offers a bridge, a means to communicate with individuals with autism. The earlier they start with it, the better the results are going to be. Secondly, for all the musicians out there, you have something very powerful in your hands. You are able to reach out to kids with autism 
through your music. Think about them when you are composing more music. Think about ways and means through which you can reach to through their music. The lady who sent me the video from Chennai has been so ambitious. She is willing to conduct Skype sessions with children who might not have access to music teachers. So the idea is now out for us to try and take forward. As Hans Christian Andersen said many, many years ago, where words fail, music speaks. Thank you.